uh, one and here I am with another Harry Potter slash Fantastic Beasts review and today's of which is on Newt's case of magical creatures. So on the front of the box here you see Lego logo, Fantastic Beasts logo, and the usual board kind of somewhat just about like the Harry Potter board, but with Newt's commander and Tina Goldstein compared to Harry, Ron, and Hermione, of course, and picture of everything there is, and also the suitcase enclosed and Wizarding World logo, all the minifigs included, and recommended ages 8 through 14, set number 75952, has 694 pieces. And on the back, you see how to fold, up, fold out the case and some various alternate shots, and also the three creatures included. And now to the manuals, which both of which have the same picture as on the front and everything. On the first one of which, add for the online survey, and all the pieces that come with the set, which is three pages. And then the second one of which, add for the two Hogwarts corridor sets and how they connect. And then add for all the mini things included with each one, so the two brickheads and the two Fantastic Beast sets. And then add for Lego Life and Newt and Niffler, of course. And now on to the mini fig selection. So first of which we get is Newt Scamander, of which, of course, without the blue coat like we've had in the uh, Lego Dimensions fun pack or story pack and also the CMF series, of course. And of which he's holding the little uh, a leaf piece representing Picket, kind of lame, which quite lame for that. I wish they could have made an actual piece of that. And the other, which is a wand, of course, but besides that, the torso print, face print, look good, and the back torso print, also good. And also has a good double side face, but although I do believe the hair piece of which does kind of well work for him, although they also could use one of the regular hair pieces, but yeah. And next to which is uh, Tina Goldstein, which also kind of similar to her appearance in the LEGO Dimensions Fun Pack and CMF series, but without the hat piece and one of the most regular hair pieces, and of course holding the newer teapot, of course, but besides that, torso print and face prints, all good, and also the back torso print, also quite good, and also has her good double side face. Also the same as in the Lego Dimensions uh, fun pack, of course. And next to which is Jacob Kowalski. And his front torso print of which done nicely and also and also all right face print and good hair piece and for accessories of course the umbrella and and of course has some nice back torso print of course and also an interesting double side face which has a chin strap on it because you can actually swap it with a, a rugby helmet piece to give it that other appearances but yeah. And last but not least is Tina's sister Queenie Goldstein, and her, oh, which quite different than the one in the CMF series since it's her pink outfit, of course, which also worked both as for Dolores Umbridge. And also, the hair piece, which also perfect for Rita Skeeter in white, but does also work for her as well, and. Also has some good back torso print and 
Also, a closed eyes and kind of cheerful double side face, of course. And last but not least, for the minifig line. Don't know if you can count this as a minifig, but also you get the uh, Niffler, of course. Of course, as the, the sculpting of which and is pretty much just perfection and of course fits on signal stud. Although it would have been nice if there was some gold prints on his belly, also suiting to how he is in the movies, of course. So, yeah. so first of which for the builds is, is the Okokni, which is made of this uh, uh, kind of palish blue and regular blue and a couple accents of purple and random darkish pink in the face print of which also used for the hungry or horn tail and whatnot which of course can open up in two spots of course but, and besides that the printing around it just pretty, is pretty much just perfection and also the same spiky pieces like the Hungarian horn tail, of course, and does have good use of the slopes there and a lot of these pieces, so good for mocking. And also a couple problems with this is it's kind of hard to get to stand and balance. Or what I would usually do is just get a random plate piece and put it on it. Uh, just this little section here and. It, Kind of it stands on its own, of course. And also the tip of the tail, which is just a couple of slope, just this slope. Although it could have been better with a Jima wing piece in purple, but maybe that wouldn't work out. But yeah. And next to which is a Thunderbird. Which in a color scheme of white, tan, and gold, and also same headpiece as the Okami and the other, and also has plenty of the Chima wing pieces, but as tail feathers, of course, and held on these golden whips, and also the whole thing can turn up and down, of course. And also, the wings just about like the Great Eagle sets in the Middle Earth line, but of which with some gold prints to it, kind of cool. Also good for mocking. And the back part, which does have a couple of rounded slopes and also a few studs to sit a mini fig on, of course. And also some more, and also that Mixel tile acting as more feathers, of course, and the gold bar, obviously. But besides that, it does well capture its in movie appearance and yeah. And lastly is a ruffle horn, if that's the right name for it. But whatever. But and of course this, which well suiting to appearance in where to find them, and when Jacob has to capture it into the suitcase, of course. And well, how it be built. All of this built can really well work as a regular rhino in a Lego City mock of some kind, but without the translucent orange uh, pieces. And also good use of the like Chima spike piece as the main horn. But besides that, the head part of which is pretty much well done and good use of playing with these rounded uh, slopes or rounded tiles and all. And the main body part of which also well done Although, which they could have added a tail or tiny tail part to it, but it's just fine. And the legs can go up and down, and they have ratcheted joints on them. And all of the front part ones are on mixel joints, and they, which makes them just swivel up and down. Although they could have worked, although they also would work if they were like swivel in and out. Or whatever, but it's it's fine. 
and of course the head, which is on the all-around movement. And, and not much else to say, but also is quite good for a build. And lastly, for the main part of it, is the main suitcase of which, which, if in the hands of a regular person, it's quite small, or unless if it was a small kid, it also could work. And as the regular uh, building techniques, I think, does well capture it. Like, good use of the, like, tan corner pieces, and also, so it does well work for it. And on this side, which, which has Newt Scamander's initials, and also those things acting as uh, straps, and also this little tile that is representing the lock to the suitcase, and it says, Muggle Worthy. We heard that he switches it to when he lets a muggle check it. Focus in. Oh wait, hang on. There we go. So now to the main feature of this is where you push on these and lift this up and then pull these apart and also lift these two up and pull off this ladder and got just a slight chunk of the whole world that it has in it. Like this area which with some brown or oddish orange tiles, and also cleaver and a brush, and also the little sink piece, is of course. Just in the small little thing there. And a little bit of foliage there, and also one of the window pieces like we've seen on the Hogwarts Great Hall, of course. And a little bit of foliage there, and in this little room of which have a couple of potions that have the diamond pieces on it, and also a gold bar, and also this picture of some character, which doesn't really look much like this character, but yeah. And also some stickered uh, long bricks, which do look good. And the other side of which is kind of identical to that, and the other corner, which, which has some gold pieces that the Niffler hoards up, and also, elfin trunk pieces, probably acting as tree trunks, of course. And also, a few little uh, circular tiles. Is there. And also, this bucket piece, of course. And also, this new interesting, or I mean, actually, it's a coat collar piece, but acting as a nest bird nest to hold this egg into it, probably where other economies is hatch out from. And to like hold it in, just put these around, have this ladder that they uh, climb onto to get in, put that down, and also make sure that these two roof pieces, that this one of it goes underneath first, and then close that part in there. And so now on let me get these all out. And so now on to with the final verdict on this. So overall this, I think, a uh, pretty good, quite cool set for Fantastic Beasts. Like, of course, you get three of the main Fantastic Beasts used in both movies, and also a good selection of mini figs, even if they have some differences than in the CMF series, of course. Oh, also not to forget little drums that you can beat to any of them, but yeah. But anyways. Also, get plenty of nice pieces to add for box, of course, and also, and also, although the Thunderbird and Akami may look like 
the dragons from the elves line, but at least they're forgivable and still workable for this and yeah. And if you're looking to get this set for your uh, Wizarding World collection, then also go ahead and pick it up. And if you're looking to get this set and they still sell it where you live, then also go ahead and pick it up. And that's about it with this video, and thanks for watching.